What's up, fish tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dawson's Fish Tanks, bringing you another sick fish room from St. Louis. Check this out, folks. I'm over at Mike Helwig's house. He's written articles for Tropical Fish Highways. I always like to go down the stairs because everybody can see kind of like how I walk into these. And there's the man. Hello, you can say hi. It's your place, man. You're talking. You're talking, yeah. We're going in here. Mike, uh, give us a, a quick the, the quick tour around in here. I know you're in the middle of moving, and that's that's all good. I walked in there. I was like, so where's the rest of it? And you turn the corner here. Mr. Gary Lang. Hmm. So, we're in here, man. What do we got going on? What do we got over here? What are these guys? Turn off the cam so you can look at Thank you. But, uh, you got a little rare Mexican Gadea in here that's uh, Caracadon uh, Audax. And then there's another little Mexican Gadea. And then, uh, just to make sure I didn't neglect the Africans, you've got uh, Pobeca Chromis humilis, and you can see there's a female inside the cave there. Oh. She's nice. Got, they got the gravel piled up against it to kind of give them a little protection. All the live bearers, right? And then you got some of these. I thought I got some of these in Peru. What are, um, what are these? That guys? is, uh, that's Perlina brevis. Okay. And uh, yeah, Perlina. I remember seeing yeah, those. Yeah, Perlina. Uh, that is uh, Spilotus. And Perlinas are neat because they spawn on leaves like a little cichlid in the male garden. They the jump eggs. up on them and then. No, no, that, these no. guys. These guys don't jump. The uh, Capellas uh, jump. Like the, that's a splash tetra. That's a vilme. Okay. And they actually lay their eggs underneath the uh, the lid. Very cool. What else we got over here? You're all, and you're all about, you got the little, a lot of the little fish here. Which yeah, a lot like. of little fish, and you can tell on my nice clean tanks. Hey, we listen. <laughs> Everybody's got tanks with a little dirt on them. What do we got up in These here? These are some natives uh, that I collected. That's a uh, cardinal shiner, and then uh, a couple of uh, those are some red fin shiners. Let's move over this way here. Got, got just it. a mix of uh, fun little uh, tetras and epistos in there, and a couple little resbors. And this is a, a native plant here, which collapsed last night when I was pulling fish out of here. But uh, this is uh, that justicia I was talking about at the auction. Oh, cool! And it's actually I'm layering it, so as you can see at each inner node, it's uh, putting up a new little plantlet. Oh, cool! So that it's supposed guy. to be a pond plant, but it's growing inside. It's coming inside. Yeah. And then just a bunch of mixed tetras yeah. over here. Those are uh, the ones from the Madre de Dios. And then these ones are the Peru Gold Stripe, correct? Yeah. And that is correct. Wow, those are cool. Did you get those in from Aquitos, or where those come from? No, those uh, oh, actually are from a local breeder. He doesn't like shipping fish, so. Uh, oh, oh, here in St. Louis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Those are cool. You selling these on Aquabid or what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your handle on Aquabid? I'm Finny, F-I-N-N-Y. Finny on Aquabid. Loving that. What else we got over here? What were those Gadeas you had? That little red Gadea. I want to show that. Yeah, there's a male back there. And cool. And yeah, that's, uh, as my nephew calls them, they, they come from a location called uh, Guadalupe Aguilera. And my nephew, uh, 14 year old nephew called him uh, Christina Aguilera. There so. you go. <laughs> Let's roll over here and then I want to go out to your uh, display room. But this. Some that's cool platies. Yeah, that's a new color of uh, Variatus. Oh, I like the. Sunrise the I like the bat, this one here with the yellow back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't see that one with that red fin back yeah, there. Those are cool. Gorgeous. Those are really sharp. And with Keevan platies, you, you do the, the high female. To, to males ratio well, or do you much hair? With, with most of them that are coming in now, they're mostly males. Um, I don't know if they're pulling back the females or if they're hormone treating them. But, uh, you get a very small, I think out of that group of eight, I only got one female. Wow. It's a rough life for her. Yeah. I gotta show this guy right here. Yeah. And you gotta so just, I always like to ask people how they filter this all central air. It's all central air. That one little pump is running everything. Oh, really? I got one of those in my greenhouse. Yeah. I love those. Yeah. Aren't those great? Yeah, we We're having a conversation yeah, over stand it. Stand right next to it, talk on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. Let's and roll slowly, around. I'm switching over to uh, all these uh, matte filters and all the tanks. So. And we were talking about this. This is actually, we call it, they call it the Ber Berlin filter, or excuse me, Hamburg filter. Hamburger matte filter. Hamburger matte filter. So, how it works is it, it pulls. Though you have a pump behind, either air pump or some sort of water flow out, and then it pulls everything in this way. And then when you breed fish or whatever, you can always find stuff behind. So a fun thing. He's got another example of it out here. Yeah, I got a couple of bigger examples. Bigger ones will roll around here. I love these little guys. Yeah, this is an old style betta tank. 
and uh, two and a half, obviously. I'd like to get those in there. Here's a bigger version of it. On oh, wow. The I didn't even catch that one. You I can see in. the fry are all feeding off of it. Of course, we just scared them. But. Well, hey, good. They're out. <laughs> And what are these? What are these fish? That's uh, Herithes tamasopoensis. They come from uh, central Mexico. Wow, those are cool. And you got two sets of them? Three. There's actually three pairs in there. There's a pair here that's got wigglers. Um, she's. You can see her tail sticking out. And there. This is obviously the dominant pair here. They've got half the tank. And then there's the third pair in the middle. Wonderful. And then we were talking about these. Uh, help me out. Synodonis. That's Synodonis multipunctatus. Multipunctatus, okay. And then there's another example of the, the filter we were discussing. And then these are the, explain to people the, the cuckoo spawning or how that works. Uh, my buddy Brian had it, but they essentially spawn when the other fish are spawning? Yeah, yes. uh, basically when the cichlids spawn, the catfish kind of hang around on the outside and then they race through when the female lay, is going around to pick up the eggs. And they'll lay their eggs and grab and eat the cichlid eggs. So the cichlids pick up the catfish eggs instead of cichlid eggs, and then the mother mouth broods the uh, the catfish eggs and raises the baby catfish. And my favorite part that I've seen so far, the Bristol bumpkins. I love these. I've seen photos of these. I'm trying to figure out a way to get one of them home with me here. Uh, the they've got. I mean, give, give us a spiel on the, the Bristol bumpkins. So I mean, they have to be. Uh, no, obviously no bend in the fin. What right, four colors? Right. What's the? Give us the, the yeah, goal. The, basically, uh, what you're looking for is a fish that's more like this one here, uh, that's got the uh, the four colors, um, the blue, the red, the black, and the white. Okay. And you can see that uh, you know on these bronze colored ones. Uh, the other thing with the Bristol Sioux bunkins, the other secret, everybody always calls the bronze ones, and then they have trouble breeding the calicos. In order to keep the calico going very well, you need to breed the bronze into it every once in a while. Okay. So that's why I, I keep the uh, plain colored ones in there with them. But uh, that's just a really pretty fish, and this was the first time I had ever seen them in my life. Unfortunately, my strain has developed uh, a notch at the top of the uh, uh, caudal fin that you don't see on uh, most of them, or you're not supposed to well, see. Well, it's. But. I mean, that's the whole... Yeah, so I mean, like, so that one technically has the the notch, the notch you don't yeah. want to see, but right. but it's a beautiful still. fish still. So have you purchased all these, or you, you didn't breed any of these? Did you, oh, these, these are except for the biggest one. These are uh, and these all. two tiny uh, ones with the red on them. All the rest of them are ones that I've raised. Wow, those are great, man. Yeah, I love the way that they have the the fins just around, just the different the different mm -hmm. body shape right, is really right. cool. Because I've seen I've seen photos of them. I've never actually seen them in person. So it caught my eye right away. And then our favorites, the old, are these just the convicts? No, or no, are these, no. Are these, are, these are Honduran red points. Honduran red points, excuse me. Yeah, these are uh, closely related uh, in the same uh, same genus, but uh, they, these are still an undescribed species. Okay. And these were collected originally, this is my oh, yeah, sixth uh, generation now in this tank. These were collected by Rusty Wessel uh, back in the early 90s, and I've had them ever since. Are they as prolific as the convicts? No. No? No, not? Not, not anywhere near as prolific. Really? And as you can see, I've got three pairs in this tank, and there are sore tails in here and catfish, and um, there's no torn fins or anything, so they're nowhere near as aggressive. Oh, okay. And then in here, one of got my... Got some nice. and again... Love the those. Matten filters growing in there. Oh, look, there you go. Nice. Garden eggs. What size do they, I mean, obviously they're spawning at that size. Yeah, they'll get a little bit bigger. They get to be about five inches. And Bob These Grower had one that young. was a monster. Yeah. I, mean, I saw go up here. Wow, look at this. These are actually wild caught white clouds. So uh, they're not quite as easy to breed as the, uh, the ones that we have in the tanks now. They look pretty, uh, pretty good though. What's yeah, it's just a mix of a couple different uh, little tetras. This is a little uh, well shell dweller from uh, Lake Tanganyika. How do you do? Uh, you do maintenance on these? You just I see you got a carpet basically, floor. Yeah, basically I've got a five-gallon bucket with a line that goes to uh, the floor drain, and then ah. I just uh, drain into that, and that goes right to the uh, goes right to the. Soil. And I love these Ryukins right here. Yeah, probably That's one of my pair. favorite goldfish. Really? Yeah. Those are sweet. Yeah, that's yeah, why they're I love isolated. their round body. Yeah. And you're keeping them in with quarries, huh? Yep. They don't, 
They don't no, care. They're, they're fine. There's even some Tetras in there right now. Too. What's the uh, what type of quarries are those? It's Corridors uh, CW003. Doesn't have a common name or a scientific name yet. Wow. Oh, what's that little spotted guy back there? That is Aspidorus uh, species. Uh, what is it? CW111. And I've got some more of those in the fish room in another tank. I love these little low boys right here. Yeah, they're nice. And this is the, a good example of the Hamburg filter. What all we got in here? And we just got some little, uh, various uh, little babies growing out. Little resboras, some little live bears, some more little live bears. And this is a pair of uh, Feta Persephone. Actually, you've got a male that's got a nest in this log here. Oh, nice. When I look at the top of the nest, you can see. They oh, cool. They don't build a big nest. Nice. A little piece of Anubis this in there. It's actually called the uh, dwarf betta, so that's why they're, you can see they're by the size of my finger. They're really tiny. Yeah, you can barely see them in there. And then what do we got down here? Some sort of a shelly? Yeah, that is uh, Lamprologus uh, multifasciatus or Neo Lamprologus multifasciatus. And the weird thing about this tank is that I've got natural shells on this side and I've got uh, PVC pipe on this side. And these are the dominant fish. They built this mound here in the center. These fish cannot cross over or these guys will attack them. Huh. But these guys can go over here without a problem. Really? And you can see all the detritus and uh, everything gets piled up over on this side, which is really funny. So these guys can go over? Yeah, but not the other way. Not the other way. And then what I'll do is I pull these shells out and I'll uh, clean out the, you know, take out some of the fish. And uh, you can take the shells out and, and uh, or the PVC pipe out, open them up, and you can get the females out real easily that way. Because um, once they get into a shell, you can't get them out. So and PVC then, is actually a better way to go for that. Yeah, if you're trying to breed them to sell them. And then what happens is this side, I'll, I'll catch all of the fish that are over here. And then within about a week, these, some of these guys have migrated over. And then all of a sudden, they become the ones that can't cross That's back over. So It's like the other side of the tracks yeah, over here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's fun. <laughs> all right, and then you got a project out of you over here yeah. as well. Good that's, deal. That's all the tanks that are going, going back into the fish room. <laughs> I like the fish room, the other room. And then over here, nice mix. Yeah, mostly uh, barbs and danios and tetras and a few little cichlids. Awesome. And then some very old corridors barbatus. Well, Mike, I've, I've read your stuff in TFH, man. You got any high level, like, 101 advice for the fish tank people? Just general advice that you could say to any, anyone you watching here on just keeping fish. What I, what I always tell people are there are three things to success. Good food. Do your water changes every week. How big? I always do 50%. I do 50% on every tank every week. And on fry tanks, I do 50% two or three times a week. And then the last thing is uh, uh, live plants in the tank. Live plants? Nice. Live plants. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. As you can tell, most of my plants are java moss, java fern that kind of stuff but uh, you know whatever you want to do uh, a lot of tanks I'll just pot plants and put them in I actually have some from last night that I still have to pot that I picked up at the meeting so. there you go but uh, that's that's the three things you do those three things good food water changes food. and live plants and you'll succeed awesome well Mike thanks a ton for having me over man well, thanks Dustin all right man tank on everybody